Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sewer's Watercolor. At any time during the video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to like it. That helps me keep my channel going. Hi, I'm Rick. I'm in my studio. And this is the second painting of my fourth mini painting series that I uh, posted here on YouTube. So these are uh, four, a series of four small paintings, very uh, simple paintings, not real complex, just in, intended to have a little bit of fun and, and practice with some techniques. So this is, as I said, is the second uh, painting that I'll be doing, and it's a, a painting of some rocks. And what I like about this, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not something that you all, would always paint, um, but what I like about it is it gives you some practice with some of the wash techniques, uh, creating textures, uh, mixing some neutral colors, and working with uh, a full range of values. So uh, this is the setup that I'll be using to do this painting. And as I said, this is the second in a series of uh, four, and this is my fourth uh, mini painting series. And this is five and a half by seven and a half. And I do have a template that's posted on my website. You can find the link in the description that will take you to the project page of my website where you'll find um, the, the materials needed for this um, mini paint. And I, it's a very simple uh, sketch with some shapes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start painting. I'm just gonna start to paint some of these rocks. And I'm gonna be mixing uh, some neutral colors for this. So I'm gonna start with some grays. So to mix my grays, I'm gonna start with some uh, burnt sienna. And I'm gonna take a little ultramarine blue. And start mixing these. And I need to get a little more burnt sienna. We'll go back and forth here a little bit. And uh, actually, what I have at the moment is uh, kind of a, a cool gray, and over here, a warmer gray. And so I'm going to leave those and I'm going to mix more of a neutral gray. So right now it's a little bit warm, so I'm going to add some more ultramarine blue to this. And it's pretty much a neutral gray right there. So I'm going to start with a neutral gray. And I'm going to just put down a wash. So this is wet on dry. It'll allow me to keep my edge. It'll it keep the, the paint where I want it. And... Um, I'm working at an angle, so about a 20 degree angle. So gravity will pull my paint down as I as I you know as I paint this, and it helps me know where it's going to go. And uh, it leaves a bead of water there. So you can say that's uh, just a neutral gray. And let's say I wanted to get a little cooler uh, on a shadow there, on a shadowed side. Of it. Let's give it some, make it three dimensional here. So I'm giving it uh, some value, some gradated value here so that it looks like it's got some shadows on it or it shows it starts to describe the form and if i wanted i could take just say a touch of uh, a little bit of my warmer mixture and i could warm one side of that if i wanted so very simple and i'm going to move on to another rock but I'm not going to paint the ones adjacent to it because I want to maintain that sharp edge. So I'm going to just strategically move about this area and, uh, you know, paint some rocks some different colors. I'm going to go with this one here and I'm going to add a little bit of a rose matter to this mixture. A little more burnt sienna. It can be kind of a reddish rock. I'm using an eight a number eight round brush for this. It could be actually, at the moment I could be using something a little bigger. Actually, I'll do that. So I'm gonna take a round wash brush that's a little bigger. Gives me nice quick coverage and I'm just painting around this shape. So if I had another rock there and let's say I wanted to get a little darker. So I'm gonna add some more pigment to these mixtures. Get a little darker. I'm gonna keep this on the on the reds with a red note there. Try 
Crop that in. And uh, yeah, I'll just put some different colors in here. I'm not looking at anything particular as reference. I just drew these shapes in and uh, just start to describe uh, the rock shapes. And I think I'll leave that. I could go a little darker. Go. I can come back and glaze on that a little bit later if I want to go darker. And now let's see, I'm going to go, uh, again, I want to look for a rock that the edge isn't touching this. So I'll go for this right here. And let's say I want to add a little raw sand to this. And I'll make this uh, kind of a, just a little bit warm, leaning towards the yellow side. And I've got a rock that's coming in there. So you can see that I'm mixing a bunch of neutrals just by, you know, I started with a, a, a neutral gray by mixing ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And then I've added some different colors or moved it cooler or warmer to give me some variation. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go fairly neutral with this. And I'm actually even going to add a, just a touch of green. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Maybe a little more. You, know, you see these river rocks and they're just all kinds of colors. That's a little too much. We'll get it in here. I'll leave that at that. I'm going to paint this a light neutral gray. And here I can see a bead of water that I left. So I want to pick that up so it doesn't start to backwash up into my the area that I've painted, which it will do. Let's yeah, see, I got that right there. I'm gonna add a little, uh, maybe a little cerulean blue to this mixture. Give me an interesting color for this rock, kind of a bluish turquoise color. Just adding to some of the mixtures I have on my palette. I'm going to lighten that a little bit. I'm going to put some textures in some of these. And uh, it's a little too dark. I'm going to lift out some. Another rock coming in here. So you can just see the variety of grays or neutrals that I have on my palette. See, I've got one. I think I can get this one in. I'm going to bring this wash down. I'm going to stop just a little short. I actually touched that. It's probably going to cause me a backwash. Um, I had a little bit too much moisture in my brush to really come out and touch that edge. So you can see it's starting to give me a bit of a backwash. So I'm running out of options here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. Then I'll paint some of these other rocks. Okay, so that's dry. And now I can come into some of these other rocks. So I'm going to put some texture in here by spritzing some water on those at some point. But the ones I'm going to paint now, I'm going to use a, a wet and wet uh, or a I'm going to spritz some water while it's still damp, I'll say. And um, a little change in color. And it'll make a, a texture in this rock with a spritz of, of water while it's still damp. And then these other ones, I'm going to come back and put a spritz of water on and lift some, some of the color out with a, with a tissue. And that'll give me texture uh, in, in another way. So I want to get a little bit more of this red in one of these. So I'm going to paint this one a bit of a red. 
Another way I, I create texture in some, something like this is I may make the decision up front to splatter some liquid masking fluid and it'll create these patterns of these textures that kind of look like a granite rock when you lift it off and then you glaze over them. I'm not going to use that in, in this particular uh, painting, but uh, it is a technique that I use. And now I can come in with this one. And the reason I didn't paint some of these, like I said, because the edge of the adjacent shape was wet. I didn't want to start getting blossoms and backwash. So I need to manage the moisture content and where I'm painting. Get something that's a little gray here. It should be okay. Let's see, we got a rock over here. We'll go with this. All right, so the ones that I've painted so far, I'm going to go ahead, uh, that I just painted, I'll say, I'm going to spritz a little water in here with a spray bottle, just barely pushing it. And what that really does is it creates kind of mini, mini blossoms. So you can see these rocks here that I just painted, how I'm getting that texture in there. So it kind of gives it that feeling of a rock. The other thing I can do is... Uh, get another brush here. Let's say I wanted some uh, darker marks in there. You know how granite sometimes is. So I have some ultramarine blue there. Take a little of the burnt sienna and just give me something that look kind of. I have number four round brush right now. I'm just gonna. These are still wet. These few that I'm doing. So I'm just putting a, a kind of a middle value tone in there. I could go dark, darker if I wanted, but just give me a little splatter. And I'll put some on some of these other rocks. Maybe I'll take a little of the lighter value mixture and put some of that in there. I think I've painted all the rocks now. I still have one right here that I need to get. So I'm gonna paint that rock. All right. And let's see, a little bit more splatter. I like texture, I like splattering and, and scraping and, and doing some of those things to create interest. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry that. Then I'm gonna show you how I lift off some of that texture also. So that's dry. So I'm gonna take the same water bottle and a, a tissue. And what I'm gonna do is, is spritz a little bit of water. Let's see, I'm going to get this rock right here at the moment, and maybe a little bit on this one. So I'm just going to strike it about a, at an angle. You can see how it's lifting texture out of that. So let's get a little bit up here. Now another way I can put some moisture on there to lift off is I can put some water in a brush and tap it on my, my hand. And then again, strike it with a tissue and I can lift off some texture where I splattered that water. So that's probably enough. That starts to give me the, you know, the feeling of rocks there. And now what I want to do is actually with that, that water I just put there, it's going to make it a little damp. So I'm going to dry that. Then I'm going to start cleaning it. Okay, it didn't take much to dry that. Um, but I'm going to, just going to take, uh, I don't know, a variety of some darker values. Let's see, there's some raw umber, a little burnt sienna. 
I don't know, some burnt orange. Uh, I'm going to take a little royal blue. This is a dark color. Mix some of this together. And as I paint this, I'm going to paint in between these rocks, you know, with just a kind of a dark middle value to dark values. And, you know, I can change the values that go a little darker when I, when I feel I want to. And as I do this too, I'm going to go, go back and forth between warm and cool. I like to mix a little warm, a little cool in the painting and have that contrast. Some of this is just going to be neutral, uh, neutral gray. Let's get something a little warmer going. And actually, you know, you can you can uh, you know be aware of what colors you use on your rocks that are cool, which ones are warm, and and. In, in this this area around it, the, the dirt or whatever this is, the ground, you could put warm adjacent to a, a cool rock to, you know, make that uh, contrast really show next to each other and make the, the colors, even though they're neutral, a little more vibrant with the warm against the cool. So the air is kind of warm. Bring a touch of cool in on this. And uh, I can glaze some of these rocks as I do this. It might come in after I paint some of these around those so I can keep some nice edges on these. So I'm gonna kind of just Painting off the, the exterior edge is what I call, often call the negative edge. And I could be going a little darker with this mixture, with what I'm putting in here. Want some stronger contrast. Take some burnt orange, a nice warm. Let that kind of merge into the blue, the royal blue that I have. This is something like I said, you can have, just experiment with, practice some of the techniques. You know, it's not a big painting to get all worried about whether it's going to be something you're going to hang on your wall. It's just a fun little exercise. So as I'm doing this right now, this is wet on dry. You know, I can keep a nice sharp edge as I paint this. Or if I want, I could soften some of this, uh, these edges, and let them kind of gradate uh, in, a, in a wash up to create a shadow on the rock, like I was starting to do earlier. shape a little bit there. All right, so now I want to dry that because I want to keep those sharp edges. I'm going to put some glaze on some of these rocks. Okay, so now let's just, we think about this. We have a rock that's kind of laying on top of another rock here. Could very well, you know, put a bit of a shadow on there and, and Plus, there could be some shadows on some of these rocks. So now I'm just going to glaze 
It's just, a, just kind of some thin washes over top of some of these. Clear water. So you can see hopefully how this starts to add a little bit of make this a bit more three-dimensional. So a middle value, then then some water just to soften that edge, gradate that value up on the rock. I'm not going to get too fussy with these. I just, you know, this is a simple demonstration just how to create some rocks. But more importantly, just different, you know, some, some different techniques, practice mixing neutrals, working wet on, uh, wet on dry to make some hard edges. Like I said, mixing neutrals, creating some textures and just a little bit of experimentation. Um, you can get much more detailed with, with this kind of a subject, certainly. Let's see, we'll get a little shadow on this. All right, and I think uh, a little bit more here. And I could do a little bit more. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this. I'm going to put just a few darker values in these areas between the rocks. Okay, so I'm going to take a number four round brush. I'm going to take some of this royal blue, which is pretty dark color. And I use that a lot to dark my mixtures. I'll take a little, maybe raw umber. Let's see. Okay, and I'm going to go in here, put a little of this dark value. You can see that how much dark that is. I'm going to take some water. Soften that a little bit. And we'll take a little bit more. Let's see, we'll go a little darker here. And a little dark here. Might go a little darker here. Let's see, we'll go darker here. I'll take some water. I want to have a dark, but I want it to be some warmer, uh, a little bit warmer color here and there. So I'm going to go here with a little warmer mixture. Some water. I'll soften that a little more with a tissue. And let's see, we'll go Get a little darker up here so I can see these rocks a little better. Some water. And let's see, maybe it's kind of a dark pocket perhaps.
I like to have some broken lines in one of my paintings, make a few marks. And one more. Let's see, I want to separate these two here a little. All right. Okay, so there we go. That's really about all I'm going to do. So just a simple little exercise, practice some wash techniques, uh, mixing some neutrals, putting in some textures, and I hope you uh, have fun painting this and don't get too worried about trying to create something to hang on your living room wall, but get focused more on the techniques that you use uh, in the execution of this. So have fun with it. Thanks.